204 for a case of 12. So that's 204 and then red for a case of 12 and then rose for a case of 12. That's 935. You must be giving them to us at cost. I, but do we think that that's enough? So we would have a case of 12. How? So 12 bottles of white, 12 bottles of red, 12 bottles of rose. No, the way that they were calculating earlier was like a bottle of wine or half a bottle of wine per person, I think. Because I don't think that's what he's calculating. Which would be so like a hundred. So he bottles, said, which is a, that's a lot though. Oh, yeah. Oh, Michael Rob just disappeared. So he said for 150 people at two glasses each, you would need 75 bottles. So he is assuming we would need 75 bottles for 150 people because they're only going to drink two glasses. And there's beer. And there's beer. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that's, that's low. I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, it seems low. Okay. Well, we know we can. Okay. We know his price, so we can bump that up. We can just extrapolate. Yeah. I mean, we can even double this and still be under what we were on the with sushi. the Applejack mm -hmm. quote. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Laura emailed me on Monday to confirm the meeting. I sent her the link again this morning. Oh, okay. Because I usually just send it. So it's just her email. Mm -hmm. It's over here. Yeah. Oh, hey, Paul, you're going to have to have a chat about like not calling people misses because that's not going to do any work when we don't know who the person is. Good morning, Doug. How are you today? I am fine, Thomas. How are you, sir? I'm very well. Thank you. Good. And I just sent you an email on the land preserve matter confirming everything. Wonderful. You. Thank you very much. That's uh. They were ecstatic when I shared that news with them. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. You're very we welcome. We appreciate it. I'll um, I'll send this over to Kathy and um, kind of just open up that dialogue with her as the executive director. Okay. You know, there's like a mosquito in here. So I'm curious, Jessica and Emily, is it that the sun is just too bright that when you open those shades, it blinds everybody in the room? 
we usually keep them closed at night um, because we have Fifth Amendment people that like to walk around and record what they can in the building. So oh, we normally just keep the blinds closed. We just didn't open them this morning. Uh, okay. That's interesting. The Fifth Amendment people? First Amendment. First Amendment. I'm first, sorry. First Amendment. Fifth. I was like, what's the fifth? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Mm. I said fifth. I meant first. <laughs> I had visions of defense lawyers walking around. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, people with cameras. More, yeah, just, just people with cameras. Hmm. What is it they're looking to record? Us. Um, <laughs> Government just, business. Yeah, just general disturbances if they huh. can if they can cause a general disturbance. If you Maybe go on YouTube and Google it, you'll see a lot of fun videos. <laughs> really? Maybe mm -hmm. they're just big fans of you all's. <laughs> no, no, no. Opposite of that. It's the opposite? They're not your groupies? No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> That's very interesting. I did not realize these yeah. things happen. We didn't either until they walked in one day with cameras. <laughs> Wow. Uh, Thomas, Thomas, I think the word groupies has been replaced by the word stalkers. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. There you go. Hope. Crazy world we live in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who has a San Francisco area code? I don't know. Hey, Doug, that's me and Michael Rob. How are you guys doing? Oh, there okay. Yeah. Well, are, are you Sorry, I, I, your phone and your can computer? Can you all hear me okay? I've, <laughs> I've got computer issues uh, on the my, on the microphone, so I, I've called in. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, I can still see, I can see all the content, just having trouble with the microphone, so I'm with you. Got it. Great. Uh, does it look like we have everybody, just not a lot of people on video today. Uh, Dino, are you with us? Oh, yes, good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning, good morning. All right. Um, yes. Nancy, are you with us? See her there. But no. Laura, Laura are, oh, yay. There you are. Excellent. Sounds like we have quorum. Hey, Dino, do you want to lead this one off? All right, good morning. Let's go ahead and really kick it off. Uh, let's get the meeting going at 9.04. Let's go ahead and call. Oh. We'll call the meeting to order. Like I said, 9.04, roll call. Barry? Present. Oh. All right, Chrisman? Oh. Present. Rob? Present. Uh, and Tisdale, I think that's all Present. we have today. Okay. Is Nancy not here? I think she just dropped off. Hmm. I, it doesn't look like we have any um, audience participation. So let's go ahead and move to the consent agenda for the five August meeting. Can someone make a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda. I second that movement. Second it. Excellent. And nothing has been removed from the consent agenda. So the next order I of business. I vote aye in favor of that motion. Aye. Okay. Aye. aye. Oh, let's go ahead and move to the 75th, the celebration. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, who wants to update us on the last week? Um, I can start. I heard from Pinos. Um, if we're ordering that all of the alcohol, hold on, one. I got, I got you got it. her. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Nancy's joining the meeting as well. If we're ordering all of the alcohol from Pinos, they need to know today. Um, <laughs> otherwise, they're not going to be able to get it. So he gave me, Michael gave me a quote again um, for Stella Peroni and then white, red, and rose wine. And I think the quantities that he's giving me might be low. 
but it's less than a thousand dollars for what he gave me. So even if we doubled that, we would still be less than Applejack. Um, but he told me, so he's anticipating two glasses of wine per person. Um, so he told me a case of 12 bottles of wine for bulk for all three, white, red, and rosé. Mm -hmm. And then um, two cases of 24 for Stella and three cases of 24 for Peroni. But I don't drink, so I don't know if <laughs> that's low or... <laughs> it, it, it really depends on how many people turn out. So right. did he offer the option of, if we place a double order, anything that does not get consumed, can it be returned or reversed? Um, he they cannot accept it return so even what we even buy, unopened correct um i asked him if we could return it if it was unopened and he said no because they're ordering it from somebody else so they would be stuck with it i guess um so no we cannot return it if it's unopened jessica do you have the quote that he sent to you or was this just over the phone no he sent it to me by email can you send it to me? Because what I can do is I can call the distributor and get a quote from them because anything that we buy above and beyond what we use, we can return as long as it is unopened, of course. Do we think we can, I mean, my own, I'm happy to do that. My only concern is this, if we're trying to go through Pinos, we have to order it today. Otherwise he's not, okay. not going to be available. Here's a quick, Jessica, here's a quick question because I just got an invitation to the art uh, thingy. Mm -hmm. Can the city keep store it and use it for another event, or are they prohibited from doing that? So with our liquor license, this is actually something that we came up against with um, the Art Commission. We had intended to purchase the alcohol this week for the Art Commission's event, because it's actually the same. It's the um, Thursday before the 75th event, so two days before. So um, their co-chair is going out of town. So she and I were going to go down and purchase the alcohol so we could get it tax exempt. We were told we're not allowed to store the alcohol. We have to buy it the day of um, to be in compliance with our liquor license. And that would be the same for the, for the committee's event. The only way around that is basically Pinos would be storing it for us. We could just go get it um, the day of or even the day before, but I don't think we're allowed to do it the day before. I think we'd be out of compliance. So I have to try to work that out with Michael. I will suggest, okay, so I, yeah, I will suggest that go we go ahead with Pinot's, that we uh, do the double order uh, because, and I haven't seen the numbers, but you're telling me that it's under $2,000 for the quote unquote double order to be super safe. And uh, I will undertake that if uh, we end up with having ordered too much and we can't return it to Pinos, I will pay the city, whatever the city actually paid. I'm not gonna pay more, I'm not gonna pay taxes, but if you paid, $800 for additional wine that we didn't use. I'll give you $800 and I'll take that wine. Okay. Um, I, so the total, Doug, I if you double the wonderful. order. I'm not sure the kids can do that. Yes, I don't know that they can sell it. Even if it's at cost. Jessica? Hi, Nancy. Hi. I, I'm trying to join by phone because my internet's going to be down. Okay. We can we hear you. you on the phone, Nancy. I, we see you on the screen and we hear you on the phone. Okay, you do hear me. Okay, all right. I'm going to sign out of the internet. Thanks. Okay. Oh, I don't know what we're hearing. But Mr. Chairman, I think uh, that uh, committee member Chrisman had a question or a comment on that too. Yeah, and here's my concern because the liquor rules are uh, contrary to common sense, as we all know. Uh, <laughs> had to deal with them so i do not uh, we would doug your offer is fabulous so it's just whether the city can do that because i know that at one point in time when i was working on a uh, transfer of a uh, a hotel uh restaurant right the liquor board came in and required these guys to 
actually pour it all down the drain. Oh, boy. So, uh, <laughs> prohibition is not dead. So, <laughs> so guys, so just make sure because you do not want to have violated that um, yeah. rule. And don't be too obvious when you ask. Just right. say, if we have alcohol left over, what is the city permitted to do with it? Right. And I will find out that, we'll see if we can find out that answer today. So um, if we were to double the order, the total cost would be $1,870.24. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we just go ahead and finalize this, order it all from Pinot's, have it, and then to the extent that we can work out the issue with surplus, uh, there may not be that much surplus. I mean, it's hard to say, but to the extent we have surplus, let's have uh, our staff check with city attorney and whomever else might be appropriate as uh, Mayor Christmas suggested. The other thing that I think we need to be very cognizant of right now on our numbers um, <laughs> is between the smoke and uh, the Delta virus variants. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people who don't come who otherwise would have come. It's true. It's true. Uh, so, Doug, was that a motion that you made or was that a suggestion? Uh, no, that, that, I'm sorry. My suggestions are always coached in the form of a motion, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, I second the motion to just purchase through Pinos based on the fact that it's supporting local business. If we end up having to pour down a bunch of liquor down the drain, hey, we gave two grand to a local Cherry Hills Village business. Hopefully everybody enjoys as much of the alcohol as they can. Hopefully, Doug can purchase it back from the city, whatever's used. But at the end of the day, I just feel like since we have today's the deadline, I think that's the, the best plan of moving forward. Thomas, I agree. Let's go ahead. Everyone in favor? Aye. Aye. Favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. It is so moved. Okay. okay. So, so the decor, entertainment, anything else? What else, uh, what else would you like to talk about then, uh, Jessica? Go ahead. Um, so we, just an update that, uh, Jessica did order the picnic blankets. They arrived, so they are all ready to go, um, for the event. So that's one thing checked off. Um, we did confirm with Ted Parks on the busted bones. So, um, I wanted to check in with the committee to find out if we had a better sense of timing from St. Mary's and from Cherry Hills Village Elementary, uh, so that we can start putting, the schedule together in a more detailed way um, with the transitions between performers in there and, and the exact times um, so that we can get our schedule in order. So um, are there any updates about how long the two groups are expected to sing? Okay, so here's the, this is Laura, here's the update, uh, the non-update update from <laughs> Cherry Hill Village. I was contacted uh, by the um, teacher slash choir instructor and mm -hmm. uh she wanted times and when should you know and really what were we expecting it's almost like we hadn't spoken um and i decided that the best thing for her would be to contact you guys directly so i gave her emily's um email address and i think she oh. you know so i didn't give jessica's because i was afraid that she might have tried to contact you while you were out. So I don't, I, if you guys would call her yeah, or, um, and, and follow up because I thought that taking me out of the middle of the timing thing uh, would make things easier for both. But she did contact me. Okay, I can give her a call. I have her information too. Okay. And regarding St. Mary's Academy, then, uh, we have confirmation that they will perform. Uh, I have not heard back from uh, Bill, uh, the head of school at St. Mary's, as to exactly how long they will perform. Uh, but they know the time frame, and they have agreed to perform. So I will follow up, but then I will, in my email follow-up to Bill, suggest that he then have whoever's responsible at St. Mary's contact uh, Emily directly and follow up with that, okay? 
That works. So right now I have um, Ted and the bone scheduled for 5.30 to 7, So, but they're flexible. So I think we can just, I'll keep them 5.30 to 7 for now. Um, and then depending if the choirs are going to be longer than a half hour together, we can just scooch them back to like 5.45 start or whenever the choirs wrap up. Do we know, will the choirs be using any amplification or are they just they just sing? I need to check on that as well. Okay. I, I guess think that's that, just... um, yeah, when I spoke with her earlier, uh, she indicated they would need some amplification. Oh. Because you're not going to hear these children, apparently. I think that's going to be the dynamic is if we have a half an hour for both choirs, what setup is required for each? And then can we have all the band's equipment already in place so that there's a quick transition from the choirs to the band? Those are the, the logistics I think that will be important to figure out. Yeah, and my hope is that the band can come early um, and set up their equipment while that because they take they do take a bit of time to set up um, that they can set up while the time capsule dedication is going on and everything else is going on on the other side and there's not really anything planned for Alan Hutto and then they can get dinner, enjoy themselves and then you know have everything ready to go um, and just start playing at their time okay but this the city's amplification equipment will be at the shelter for the time yes. capsule dedication so if the choir needs amplification that's going to be something they'll have to supply themselves yes um uh yes because <laughs> i think it would okay. be helpful to keep the cities over here and that way we can make announcements yeah. on this side that like yeah. You know, CHV choir is going to start on the other side in 15 minutes, that type of thing, and, and make announcements if we need to on this side. So um, I know Cherry Hills Village Elementary, when they did their um, graduation at Allen Hutto, they have they do have their own amplification system because they brought that. Um, okay. So hopefully everyone can supply their own, but that's when they contact me, I'll confirm all of that with them. And hopefully the first choir that goes on could then share their amplification equipment with the second choir so we don't have to do a swap in between. Yes. Yeah, because that would really just slow things down tremendously yeah. and people Big time. lose interest. Lose the vibe, yep. All right, well, thanks everybody for working on that. That's a great point, thank you. Okay, so on the alcohol, I think we've already covered that adequately. Is there anything else that we need to go over with that? Not with the alcohol. I don't did think so. Did we get um, the second bartender? Yes, mm -hmm. we do have, we have two bartenders. Um, I was, I was emailing Laura, our city clerk, while you guys were discussing quantity. Are we sticking with 200 people or did you want me to reduce that? It's so hard to know. <laughs> we're, just, knows, we're just guessing just, at this point. I know, throwing, it is hard yeah, to know. At this point, we have 27 people RSVP'd. Um, that does not count committee members. Right. And right. most of council. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's primarily most of council that are coming and their right. significant, their families. So that, so that gets us up around 50, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of roughly. Mm -hmm. So I think another 150 is attainable as long as this Delta stays under control somewhat. Okay, so I'll still go with 200 for our, for our head count. Uh, that's what I'll let Michael know. Sounds great. I think that's, re I think that's reasonable. Yes, yeah. I concur. Okay, terrific. All right. Okay, so it sounds like we've got the action items uh, done. Let's go ahead. Uh, is there anything that we need to adjust here on the budget? Um, so, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I was just going to say, so we um, had questions about the refreshment table, which I'm trying to find in here. Here we go. Um, so we, our outdoor movie night is August 21st. So what we were planning is we were going to do a big Costco run on August 20th. Um, and try and get as much of the supplies as possible for the 75th event at the same time. Obviously, the ice cream has to be its own run kind of closer because um, we don't have a yeah. ton of freezer storage, but trying to get some of the items for the refreshment um, table. Okay. So 
we wanted to confirm with you all um i have on the list for at the bar to have options that aren't alcohol so someone can you know go up to the bar and get a sparkling water or just a plain water um but then for the refreshment table we kind of had a big list so i wanted to narrow that down with um the committee okay um and that's here so um i think our plan was to get especially with covid kind of ramping back up um what we've been doing for our events is doing like as much individual packaging as possible and as much um like doing separate drinks so there aren't shared surfaces that people are touching on drink dispensers or on like that type of thing um yep. so is the committee good basically that we stick with this list but like individually package lemonades iced teas juices um and then same thing like individually wrapped popcorns cookies um chips granola bars that type of thing is there anything specific you'd emily like that looks good the only thing that we need to consider with that is just <laughs> waste and to make sure we have enough uh trash cans recycle bins there on site so that it's easy for people to dispose of it once they've finished consuming it yes uh, good point. We have a bunch of trash cans on our list for parks to bring over from um, the public works facility for the event. Perfect. Is there a way to recycle or does this all go to trash? We can put out recycling bins. Um, unfortunately, what we've found in the past is they get contaminated very easily during events like this. Um, and the city is actually fined if we um, put things in our recycling that are not recyclable. So um, mm -hmm. we typically don't put out recycling too because it comes at a cost. So you're saying all this plastic is going to be just thrown in the trash? Um, yes. You know, I think, uh, and I know this is more eye candy than anything else, that you put out a couple of recycling bins and ask for bottles and cans. Right. Um, and uh, if it gets contaminated, then you throw it in with the rest of the trash. But I do think that we're going to get feedback if we don't have recycling bins out there. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. I think so. And it, and it might be just a simple sign. And Laura, I think that's a great point. I think I, I'm, I'm confident that if we put a sign in front of each trash can that says bottles and cans or something equivalent to that, I think yeah. that the likelihood of people recycling is going to be much higher. And I, I, I would feel bad if we didn't at least give it a, a, an attempt. Yeah. And what if it was more recycling bins than trash? Like a trash can looks like a trash can. It's got a trash can liner in it. The recycling are more milk crate-esque where it's bottles that go in them and you can see it and you can see that, you know, hopefully you can see a paper plate that was put in there or something, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, I think we, we, do need need trash. we are going to have a lot of trash. We're yeah. going to have half pizza um, or whatever, you know. So we have to have a lot of trash bins. But I think near the bar, we should have the recycle bins for the bottles and cans. Right. Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that that sounds good. I yeah, I, I could, I could almost say as an option. incorporate it into the, 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 the design of the refreshment station a little bit that's going to have the wooden crates and the, 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 the tin vessels for the, where the drinks are going to be in and such. Uh, I can almost have a kind of a cute recycling area that I think people will appreciate, if that makes sense. Do you, do you have wooden bins on this? I do. I do. You do. There you go. I do. Okay. I got all it. Let, Perfect. I'm happy to make. I'm happy to make sure we've got a, you yeah. know, politically correct recycling area at both the bar and the refreshment station. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Definitely want to encourage the kids on this one for sure. So. That's a good example to set. I agree. Yeah. Just real quick on that list that you had up there. Obviously, we just need to strike the infused water. Yes. I can take that off. Yeah, but no, I've got a ton of different bins and elements to have the, the lemonades in and the, the, the juice packets and all the different things. We'll make it look cool. It'll all be COVID friendly as much as possible. Great. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Okay, anything else on that? I don't think so. Yeah, the only other update that I have is the time capsule sh should be delivered today. And we got the lanyards hmm. last week. So, or yesterday, sorry. We got the lanyards yesterday. Right. So as far as everything we've ordered, Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Nice. Yeah. Time capsule doesn't get lost today. <laughs> it's, it's pretty it big, so they should not. Awesome. Should not. Real quick on the on the food stations, um, can we confirm with the with the pizza station and the hot dog station that they'll any condiments associated with will be single serve versus everybody grabbing a ketchup bottle and putting it onto their hot dog. Um, I will email the hot dog vendor and find out. I don't know the answer to that question. And I don't know that we were going to have any pizza condiments. Were you thinking yeah. like red peppers and Parmesan cheese? Red peppers, Parmesan, just in the little single serve pouches in a okay. basket. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask Michael about that when I email him about the alcohol. Yeah, they sell them like you get a box of them for like $12 at Costco if we needed, right? Okay, yeah. If, if oh, they can't bring it, then we'll make sure we fix them up. They probably cool. have them at that Costco too. Yeah. Speaking to that point, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, are we going to have hand sanitizer stations around the event or are we going to have individual hand sanitizers? Because I think, for example, uh, you know, with the ketchup, you probably could yeah. do that, but you say, here's a hand sanitizer, please use it. I'm just wondering about sanitizer. We plan to have hand sanitizer at all of the tables. So basically at the bar, at the refreshment station, at like anywhere you're serving food. Um, and then the restrooms in the park have soap and running water in them. So people can fully wash their hands if they'd prefer to do that um, instead. On that note, I know that we're, gosh, what are we, 17 days out. Um, if for some reason a mandate comes into play, what? of masks or something do we have a we need do we need a game a game plan or does the city pre apt with okay if we have to we just need to have some signage what happens if all of a sudden we have to implement some sort of mask mandate or social distancing parameters well i think it just depends on what the guidelines will be um we'll yeah. just have to as soon as we get the guidelines then we'll have to come up with a game plan um before what what they were saying is you need a designated entrance you need a designated exit which meant we would have to sort of rope off the entire area so we'd have to figure that out um Eesh. yes there were six feet six foot requirements there were mask requirements um lately what they've just been saying is post signs that say masks encouraged not necessarily required so i mean we might do that um, yeah. and i have signage that we used at the john mead park um, grand opening about distancing too, because that was really the only thing in place at that time. Um, so I have those as well. If we need to pull those out, we have them. Let's right. hope we get through the next 17 days without having to do that. <laughs> Fingers we'll, crossed. We'll keep an eye on uh, it. We'll let you know as soon as we hear. If we hear anything, we'll let you know as soon as we can. Yeah. Great. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Let's take a look back at the agenda there. Right. Um, the, the next, I think that's everything for on our list for the event, unless anyone has anything else. The next thing on the agenda is just um, choosing a next meeting date if we think we have to have another well, one or if the committee is comfortable meeting the Friday before to set up, basically. Well, we do, we do want to let maybe Doug take the, the mic for a second to talk about uh, his conversation with the mayor. Right. Apparently, I guess you've you you've got a script that he's approved. So uh, let, I want to take that, Doug, and just let us know where we're at with everything. Thank you. Appreciate that. I did have a very good conversation with Mayor Stewart relative to uh, the event, and uh, he's more than happy to be there. Uh, he's promised that he would be uh, even less than the three to five minutes that uh, I had allotted for him. Uh, and uh, knowing Russ, I'm sure he can do that. So we'll be fine on that. I then took the opportunity while I had him on the line to talk about our situation with the photographic exhibit and the fact that, gosh, you know, we had money last year that would have funded the whole thing and then we didn't use it. So we gave it back. 
and we have a budget this year and you know somehow that didn't quite get amped up as much and we were looking to be you know a little bit short on this thing and it really would help if the city would uh, look at a supplemental appropriation bill to allow us to get some additional funds to complete that work and i said you know if, if we could get for example two thousand dollars or more if you felt like it from the city's general fund to be able to finance the uh, photographic exhibit that would be terrific he was very enthusiastic about that because he said oh yeah that's the project you've been collecting pictures for that's very important it's very significant it will last absolutely i would support that wholeheartedly so uh the way we have left it is that it would be appropriate for us to go back to the city uh, and I leave it to staff to determine the best mechanic for accomplishing that uh, with a supplemental budget request for, and I would say, we could say $2,500. I'm assuming, and I haven't heard an update yet from uh, Co-Chair Maniatis on this, um, but uh, the, the overall cost hopefully would be something under 4,000. If we got as much as 2,500 from the city, we have 500 in the budget, there's 3,000. We're $1,000 short. I think we could raise $1,000 at the event on the 28th by asking people in the form of a special appeal to uh, come forward and make a donation to the 75 plus one anniversary celebration so that we could get the uh, art uh, fully mounted, installed and available for the city in perpetuity. Good job. Yes, thank you, Doug. That's great news, Doug. That's great news. So then so, so that what's that? money has been earmarked then we, we can rely on the, at least the $2,000 plus the $500. Yeah. I mean, I, we haven't got it yet. No staff <laughs> has to help us going to the council. <laughs> right. right. So we, just, we have mayor support right now. So we just need to um, get it on an upcoming agenda and speak to the rest of council and if council approves it. Then, then you'll have support. So we don't have time to get it on the next agenda, but we can try. The 31st is the next meeting. The 31st, yeah. They they moved their first meeting in September to the 31st of August. So we'll have three meetings in August. We can try to get it on that one, which will be after the event, but I mean, it's, it would be the best we could do. Can, can you remind me, Desire? Our... Sorry, go ahead. No, thanks, Tom. It, it might be worthwhile maybe to ask for a slightly larger amount, maybe somewhere around $4,500 or $5,000, just given the cost of all of this. Uh, it, it never, it, it almost never comes in under budget. It comes in at budget or maybe a little bit more. And given the archival uh, intent here, I, I think it's worth it to, you know, maybe ask for a little bit more. Uh, than 2,500, because I, I don't think we can do the entire, bo both projects, I don't think we can do those uh, for 2,500. Well, my, I guess, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. I mean, we're kind of shooting in the dark here. And uh, I, I went out on a limb with the mayor uh, asking for this. And, uh, you know, he was more than enthusiastic. I don't want to show up and uh, you know more than double uh, my uh, our uh, request for funding, but beyond that, we don't have anything to show them as to what exactly the cost is going to be. We're still waiting on that. Uh, we've heard these estimates, and we had a four thousand dollar line item last time. I think we really need to have something specific that we can present because i don't want to go to the council and say you know this is going to cost us a lot of money it'll probably be four or five grand or my gosh it might be more than that I, they need to see something well yeah and if you remember okay, here, if you I, recall... have an idea. I have an idea you guys just wait a minute um a 
when is the last date we can get that forward on the agenda? Isn't it the, like the Friday or Thursday before? Um, packets go out on Wednesday. So shooting for the 31st. Monday. We should shoot for Monday. Yeah, um, we would probably, we have to write the memo and prepare all the attachments. So I would say Monday or Tuesday, which would be the 23rd or 24th, Tuesday the latest. Okay, so that gives us an outside date. Okay, um, Dino, is it possible to get the numbers set for two different displays? A less expensive $2,000 one and the really wonderful one at four to five. So the, of that, course. Uh, the city has an option. So we, we give Doug uh, a a backstop so it doesn't look like he was you know blowing smoke there and yet we give them the option of this is really this would be uh, a five thousand dollar presentation archival blah 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 this would be a two thousand dollar presentation perhaps not archival um and um not as many pictures and give them the option yeah and then we go with whatever it is no, and I think that's a great point. But uh, Doug, to answer your question, it's it's difficult to just throw an exact number because we don't know exactly what it is that we're trying to accomplish. I mean, there's different there's different mediums that we can we can do. I mean, there's different levels of quality, archival quality, sizes. I can't tell you exactly what the graphic designers are going to cost uh, up front because there there's there could be more time involved in some of these images than others so it it, it there's not a, a real way we had about 4100 and Jessica maybe you could correct me if I'm in, if I'm wrong here but I, I thought we had about 4150 dollars and at that time I felt comfortable that it would cover the bulk of the uh, the display there but to give you an exact number, certainly happy to give some options, but I, I can't tell you exactly what, you know, this graphic designer who's around 85 or $95 an hour and how much time they're gonna have in this project. But I, I think that if we had 5,000, we could do the archival uh, option. Uh, the other option, it's hard to say. I mean, we can print this on Gator board or some foam core and we can do it cheaply, uh, but, you know, and if we want to go down that path, if we know that there is some funding there, uh, it would mean that I can, you know, drive down there, spend spend the time to investigate it. But any bid, as you know, requires time. And if I know that we have the, if, if we want to go one direction versus the other, I'm happy to do that. But what I don't want to do is, is you know, have eight or 10 hours in this and nothing happens, you know, or maybe we go in a completely different direction. So I think it's helpful to have this dialogue up front to Get the committee's intent as to what 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 is our preference? Are we looking to have this as more of a long-term archival uh, display at City Hall, or is it just something that's more ephemeral that we're just going to put up and then just put in the storage bin uh, afterward? Nancy, we can't hear you. I'm gonna chime in and say that. You're you're, you're muted, Nancy. Um, okay. There, can you hear? Sorry. Can you can you start again? Yeah, uh, I, and I don't know if you can hear me on the phone either. I've been yes. trying. Oh, yes, no. we can hear you now. I don't. Oh, but you're. Oh, I'm on the computer. So like, we can out. see you. We can see you, and we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the original plan was to have this be a long-term thing, and I think that is the yeah. better way to go. But I, I am very much opposed to having a little jar or whatever to ask for donations at this. Party, I, I think that's tacky, <laughs> and um, I, I think we're better. Like, like Doug had recommended, maybe have a few different options and some ideas on costs, and then see what City Council comes up with. With a recommendation from the committee as to our preference, I think. Yes, at least I, I obviously. Yes. I would prefer that they spend more money and and get something that's loud. Summer. But if the council goes, yeah, we don't care, you know, just put up a few posters and, you know, no one will remember it anyway. Sure. I mean, that's their option. But I think the, com the mm -hmm. committee needs to make a recommendation. Oh, uh, 
but we need to give the council another option. I don't think they would take it, but I think also that covers the back side, because I think it's important that that original request, we have something to say, yeah, we can do it for 2,500. Here's the, the good point. It can be done that cheaply. Here's the bad point. It won't last. Right. I agree with you, mm -hmm. Laura. Yeah. Yeah, Laura, that's an excellent point. I mean, as long as we have, you know, uh, some unity here as to what we would like to recommend to City Council, and I, I agree with you all that it should be more archival. I, I think what <coughs> may happen is if we do it uh, cheaply, that it will it will end up in a bin somewhere. It'll get damaged, and it, you know, it it won't hold up over time. Um, so, yeah, and Mr. Chair, I agree with <coughs> excuse me the notion of going archival on this, I just want to have some better sense of number. And and I, I, I understand what you say about, oh, well, it's hard to do these things. I'm sorry, I spent, you know, 48 years practicing where I had to give people estimates on what I thought something was gonna cost uh, when they asked me to represent them. So uh, I suggest that we, we can and should get some realistic number because otherwise, we run the risk that this turns into the plans for a city hall that we had back in 2008 that went from 5 million to 15 million and uh, that got everybody on council thrown out. Yep. So uh, we can't do that. We can't come back and say we want, as we said last year, 4,100. And now you're saying, well, let's ask for 5,000 and then present them with a bill for 7,000. I agree. Well, then let's uh, let's decide. Well, then then let's get some clarity as to what we all want, because right now it's very vague. I mean, we don't. Is it what level of, of quality are we looking for? Are we looking to do the entire display? Are we looking to do a portion of the display? Uh, you know, it, it's hard to estimate this. And, and I agree with you. Sure, certainly. I mean, I've done bids for 30 years. I, I know how they work. But we need to have some clarity as to what it is that we want first before we can bid it out. You can't just tell me that we want to display and go bid it out without knowing we want to have this last for 50 years or we want this to last for the weekend. If, if there's some clarity as to what we want and we can decide upon that, then I'm happy to get a bid for you, but I can't call these folks and just tell them, hey, we want to display. I don't know exactly what we want, but bid it out for us. Well, if you Mr. tell me Chair, I okay, want- Okay, I'm gonna help you out here, Dino. Yeah. I'm gonna make a motion that um, the committee would recommend archival uh, quality, and I don't know if that's 30 years, 50 years, um, display of, um, you know, your best pictures um, that, that we have and go up or down based on your graphic design uh, for a price of approximately $5,000. Um, and so that you can go see what, if, if that's realistic, but that would be my motion is that you go forward. The committee would recommend archival. And I'll, I'll second that motion and I'll add the comment as context to the motion, the display that we have been showing in our packets for the past several uh, meetings is <laughs> the map display and that shows the lines connecting to where the pictures are. And then there were a total of, I believe, 12 pictures. And if we you know, can get a price on that, and then we find out, well, if you did just 10 pictures, it would be X dollars less. And if you did eight pictures, it would be Y dollars less and so on. Perfect. So to give you all context, what that archival, le that level of quality would look like is the aerial that we did that hangs in City Hall right now. That exact product. Archival things depend on archival yes. storage, which is like- So that would be the premium archival product. Anything else would be, would be less than that. That's the sort of this, the gold standard, if you will, uh, with the right, the right paper, the right coding, the right backing material, something that 50 years from now will still be at City Hall in the same condition. Yeah, it's on metal, right, Dino? 
That's correct. Yes. Absolutely. I yes. That we kind okay. of talked about way back that, when that we wanted. That, that's, I guess, if I could chime in here, I thought we all were in agreement that this is what we were doing. And all that needs to happen right now is that the artwork needs to get print, print ready. We need to secure the rights for two pictures that we don't have rights for currently, and we go to print. I thought that's where we're at. And so right. if, if we're that close, can we get a bid? Can, are we gonna use the, the graphic designer that the city uses and can they give us a bid? If not, Dino, can your graphic designer give us a bid? There will, could be obviously a threshold of contingency plus or minus 20% on their bid, but they should be able to narrow it down within a certain parameter of cost wise and then you should be able to know we we need to, the rights for two pictures. The cost is X, and then to print twelve photos on metal backing is X. To do the header along the top is X. To do the legend along the bottom is X. To buy the little numbers that we're going to stick on the thing is X. Then we can present it to city council. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so, can, good. Do, so can we complete that motion that we all agree? I make I make I make an. And an, an additional motion that we all agree that what was just said is what we all envision that we want this to be. Yes, I agree. Yes. Is there right. a second? Oh, you need a second. <laughs> second. Okay. Vote. Yay. Okay. Oh, Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Aye. Decided. Wonderful. All right. So what's Good. the action? So what's the action plan then? Where can I will we, take can care we, of the action plan. I will I will uh, liaise with the graphic designer in the lab and the library, and I will get a bid uh, so that we can have it for the next meeting. Yes. Do we need a little bit more time? Or, or no, is it, is, no, is I think the we can do it that year? time. Okay. Oh, we well, almost we have to do it at that time if we're going to have ask for money from uh, council. Well, it would be helpful to have it for the next committee meeting so that the committee can review it and agree before we put it in council packets. Exactly. Um, since right. council packets are due, basically we need to assemble them the 23rd for them to actually go out on the 25th. Um, so I think that that. So that means we would need this by, are we have, if we have a meeting next Thursday or Friday, we need it by then, by our next meeting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Thomas, you know, uh, is that realistic? I believe so. Yeah, what, yeah I, I believe it is. What is the size? Refresh my man. I don't have my notes on this in front of me. What are the sizes of these individual photos? I would have to look back through our notes. I'm sorry, I don't have that in front of me. Does anybody okay. have that information? I don't. I don't, I don't think we were. I don't. Well, yeah. Can you get that? Dino pretty quickly. So he'll well, have we, never got, we, we never got the sizes. We only got the layout. We have what's in front of you, but we don't have. Yeah, I think that was between sizes. Dino and I. So yeah. I will look back through oh, okay. uh, our correspondence and try and locate that information. I was um, kind of assuming they would be like an eight by 10. We aren't talking about something much larger than that, are we? Well, the, the, the aerial picture that you see there, uh, it's five feet across. No, that, yeah, I know, I know the aerial, but I'm talking about the individual photos. Well, if they were eight by ten, it wouldn't be in the same proportion that you see on the screen right now. They would be much smaller pictures, and so I think what when Thomas and I had worked on this uh, in order to make the proportion, the sizes look proportionate to the large image, these pictures have to be eleven by fourteen or sixteen by twenty. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're big, they're big pictures. They're not eight by 10. If they were eight by 10, you could stick all of them on the left there and they would be very small. So well, Thomas and I have worked on this to get them to where proportionately it looked, you know, symmetrical. Well, but, but, but no, bear, bear with me a moment. If the aerial photo is five feet across, that means that it is three feet high. If it is three feet high and that's 36 inches and there's two inches of space between the uh, the photos uh, there, you'd have uh, then 32 inches. So uh, you're talking about 32. you know just roughly 10 inches of height to the picture. So is it uh, you know 10 inches high on the photo, and what would that be? 12 inches across, so a 12 by 10. Am I doing that correctly? It's not quite. 
it, it was an odd you to, style. You have to factor was, in the, the banner on the top too, Doug. Banner on the top and the legend. And this actually, this is actually an older version. Sorry, uh, guys. The new okay. legend has twice as many items on it. Um, th there's another file. So let me look back through the files, everyone, and I'll, I'll figure that out. It's I'm guessing it's somewhere in that 11 to 14 inch size, maybe a little bit bigger for each one of these. Uh, when you actually calculate it, the, the total height that's going to be there in the total width of the project. So um, I can dig that up. I can get it over to Dino and we can uh, and thank you, Dino, for working on getting as close to a bid that we can from the printers, yeah. from the graphic designers. Uh, so we have something to put in front of city council and hopefully get their blessing and their money, <laughs> our money. <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to to spend on this so well both right um yeah but but doug yeah to 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 to, to dovetail onto this i mean that that's what thomas and i had tried to work out and is to make this so that it all looks symmetrical because it wasn't right. this aerial photograph is, is a is a ortho rectified aerial that we split there's actually two images here that we stitched together and ortho rectified to a gis map and so there, it doesn't quite fit into the parameters of just a standard eight by 10 aspect ratio. And okay. so as a result of that, we've had to play around with the sizes of the photographs in order for them to fit symmetrically on the left and on the right. So it's not quite a simple mathematical calculation that would be easy to just tack onto, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but can't the graphic designers give you some uh, recommendations as to what size of photos would be the best? I mean, if, if they're if, the graphic designers, they would know what would look good, correct? Yeah. We just need to give them the size of the banners. And then from there, we can certainly plug in the size of the photographs. Now, keep in mind, as you change the sizes of the photographs in order to fit the display, there might be some information that is cropped from the picture. So we're trying to find that sweet spot where it has, for example, the Arnold Palmer photo, uh, or you know some of the other like the windmill photo. If we cropped it too much, it would cut the, the the top of the windmill off. So we're trying to find you know the sweet spot. So if we can adjust, Thomas and I can adjust that banner accordingly, and then determine what the aspect ratio is of the photographs. Hmm. We'll make it work. Again, and again, this is this is the wrong. We don't have the little placards underneath the photos in the new design. The new design is all legend based. So the photo in the top left hand corner is number one, and it corresponds to the legend. We haven't labeled it underneath. So Right. It's, it's a different look and feel, but yeah, exactly what Dino's saying. If the whole total height is this, then the mathematics will, will determine how big the pictures are going to be. Yeah, and Thomas, where do you, I guess we probably should decide where we want the number. I guess it could be maybe at the bottom right of each image or something like that, or do, the color. Do, do you guys have, Jessica, do you have the most, re, the more recent file that you could put up? Um, I'm the one screen sharing, Thomas, sorry, do you know when? Sorry. Do you know when that's from? Because this, I think, is the most recent one that was in packet. I emailed it. I, I emailed it to Jessica. Can you recently? Recently. Well, yeah. Because uh, I don't know that our I don't know that our time as a committee is well oh, spent fighting yeah. where we put the, the legend numbers on the picture. Oh, great. I can't. I can. My internet's going to die in about twenty minutes. Um, Thomas, the one that you sent is an AI file, so we can't open it. Jessica's going to try and convert it. But um, is there a committee member that's available to come to council the night of August 31st then to make this request? We can put it in packets, but it's better if a member of the committee um, is presenting it and asking for more funds rather than staff. Yeah. And you're talking about August 31? Yes. I am not available on August 31. What day of the week is that? Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday, and the meeting starts at 6.30. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I could probably be there. I may be able to join you, Thomas, possibly. Okay. Well, what about having the jar for donations at the party on the 28th? I mean, I... Actually, I my, my thought wasn't a jar. It was a paddle raise. It was a special appeal. Oh. that we actually yeah. do. I, I, just, I just think that'll take away from the flow of the event. Yeah, I agree. Percent, which is fine, but I just made it as a suggestion because right. you have to recognize that there could be some sticker shock from council, particularly if you're going to come in 
and now tell them, yes, we have a bid for $5,600 plus or minus 20%. Well, we can all just chip in $500 each or $750 each as committee members and just right. close the gap. Yeah. Well, let's see what it's going to cost. Yeah. It's not let's, a yeah. Sticker, uh, shock, Doug, because really what happened was it kind of disappeared from one budget period to the other. Okay. So it's not like we're coming out of the blue with this. The other thing mm -hmm. is everybody should know that we're throwing this anniversary party thing and the costs from when we started this process and the costs now are quite different. Right. So uh, the fact that we're putting on something in, through the city or the city is putting on something through us, this is the city's event. I, I think it's pretty extraordinary that we've kept to the budget and yeah. that uh -huh. It really is something very different, and it's really a long-term art project, really. So I don't think it's. I don't. I don't think they're going to say no. Okay. But if no, they, I think it, if you need to give them a cheap option, and why, you know, that the only good thing about the cheap option is that it's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Laura, and, that's a great perspective. And it doesn't, yeah. I don't know that it doesn't take into account also the timeline too, that we had proposed uh, printing on the same media. So that's, that's another expense. And Laura, to your point, you're absolutely right. We had a $43,000 budget approved last year, uh, a fraction of which is going to be spent this year. So we're far under budget. Uh, mm. And so we're not, cause we're not doing the gala mm -hmm. and, um, and this is something that will be an, a city asset for the decades to come. So I, that's a great point. Just to clarify, you are not far under budget. Council approved 13,500 this year, mm -hmm. partially due to COVID and all of our budgets being more limited. So just keep in mind when you're, when you're speaking to council, I would not present it as being far under budget because that's the, not really an accurate representation of what was approved. The, the tickets were going to subsidize. The tickets were going to subsidize right. the additional. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I yeah. agree. To, right. to, yeah. To add into what everybody's saying, though, I think that this is very important because this is the, unfortunately, the way things panned out, this is the only real historical element of what we've been able to create. And it will be the only kind of other than the villager piece, which was amazing. This is our legacy of this committee that we will leave outside of just some memories of a very casual event at the park. Well, and the time capsule. And the time, the sorry, and the time capsule. capsule. I'm sorry, that's true. It's the legacy of the city. Yeah. We've yeah. got to really, it's the leg, we're just acting as consultants, yep. essentially, ultimately. Yep. And this is something that we're putting, putting into their laughs is this what you want or not as a city if you don't want to fund it no skin off our noses right and they're all excellent I, points and emily thanks for that clarification um I, I thought i recall we had uh if we were going to do the gala it we did have a a, a an approval for a forty three thousand dollar budget and the only point i was trying to make is that now it is a far it's far different in scope and it's far smaller in scope we're not doing two events so well, I wasn't trying to imply that we're saving the, the, you know, the city money, but the nature of our events and the scope of our events is a fraction of what it was last year, because last year city council approved 43,000 to do a gala and to do this uh, daytime event at John Mead. Now it's only a scaled down version of the day event. So that's the only point I was trying to make with that. And can I clarify, is this the hallway design that we're looking at right now, is this the only thing that's outstanding? I thought there was also a question about the villager piece as well that we have to pay for. Yeah, the, the other piece was the timeline that we did. Uh, we were going to print that on the same. Thomas and I had worked on that and we had come up with a similar in its presentation display for the hallway that would go behind the desk. There's art. So story. that oh, sorry. sorry. So that cost would be um, additional. Additional to, to this as well. So we have to sort of put that in our ask 
I and I can put this all together. It just takes time. I'll put this all together. We'll get a cost on it. And then we can decide whether or not it's it's feasible to do or or not. And what okay. city council's temperature is on it. But given the amount of time that we have all spent on this project, I feel, you know, Laura makes a great point. This is something that will be archival, something that the city will have uh, in perpetuity. And, and it's and as Thomas said, it, it is something that is an end result. It's a product of, you know, the time capsule and these two displays are a byproduct or the end result of all the time and effort that we've spent in almost two years of serving on this committee. And although I think if we can only do one, I, I think what's on the screen now is what we should do. If we can only, if, if we only get money for one project. I mean, it's less comprehensive, I, but, but it's, yeah, you know, but it's, it's a project certainly. Well, we already have the, um, the aerial. So I think we, we go with what we've already got. We augment it. Okay, so that, you know, thank you for working on this. Please let us know how we can support you. I'll get you those dimensions. Um, is there anything else, guys? Uh, I unfortunately I'm going to have to run. I have to um, check out my, quick, my hotel room now. <laughs> before you go, um, Susan from the Villager emailed me this morning and said she wanted me to come back to you guys. She knew we had a meeting today and ask if you could find four hundred dollars for a two-page spread covering the event. So they reduced it from the original amount she told me down to four hundred dollars. So this I don't is not think a $500 it, I don't half page ad. Where, which we've already paid. Right, we have paid $500 for the half page ad. This would be $400 for a two page after the event spread. That sounds reasonable. I, I, yeah, but I don't think it, I would not want to ask council for that. I mean, I guess yeah. we could put it do, on the page. Do, do we have that left in our budget is the question. You do. It seems pretty reasonable for a two page spread. A two page yeah. follow up. Two page follow up, four hundred dollars. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all, Doug. If nope. we have room, uh, I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second that. Okay, let's have discussion because <laughs> there are many, many people in the village who do not get the villager, and they are not offering to to send this to everybody. That is like correct. They Originally, this. they were. If you would have done the twenty-one hundred dollar thing, that would have gone to all the residents. This four hundred dollar thing does not. It only goes to the people that subscribe. In no, digital and in print. I would suggest that we do the equivalent and we stick it in the crier. I agree. Going to make the crier a little more expensive. Yeah. But everybody in the village gets that. Right. Good point, Laura. That is a good point. Go on the October issue. Is that right? So if we put it in the crier, it will go in the October issue because the deadline for the September issue is August 13th. Mm -hmm. Right. Is and, that okay? We, we were already sure. to do like a wrap up in the crier anyway. So, and, and as you guys know that that's run it, the city does that. So that's mm -hmm. no cost to the committee. Um, this right. is just Susan's last, I guess request to, to yeah. try to get some business. And I, th I think as Doug mentioned in the past, there's a good chance the villager will do a follow up regardless because they yeah. need content. Yeah. That's so. right. Okay. Okay. All right. So then I will just let her know um, we kindly declined her request. We'll stick with the $500 half page ad. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Awesome. Can you Thank you. We did, so we need to see a, a date for our next meeting? Yeah, next day. So we can only do either next Tuesday or next Thursday next week. That was redundant. Tuesday what? or Thursday what? next what? week. That's <laughs> so what happens what? when I try and do my screen share and talk at the same time. Don't. There you do go. That. <laughs> um, because we have we have some staffing limitations next week, getting ready for a movie night, especially, and then we have court on Wednesday. So I sorry, which day is which day is available? Tuesday. 17 and 19. How about Thursday, we do the 19, 17, Thursday 19. I am unavailable on Thursday 19. Oh, okay. okay. I'm not available the, on the that's mm -hmm. and that's tight on your uh for Dino for turnaround on what we need to get done. That is a little tight for me. Uh, it honestly that's <laughs> tight for me, but Doug, you're out the all day <laughs> Thursday, the 19th? Um I've got, let's see, nine, 10, 
10, 11 30, 11 30 to 1. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm available 1 30 to 4 30 on Thursday. Mountain time. 30 to 4 30. I could do it's one. one thir I've got a, a reception I have to go to at 4 on oh. Thursday. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't do that afternoon. I'm sorry. Uh, four thirty. Maybe do four thirty. We could. Could we do the Monday? Could we do the Monday, uh, you, the twenty third? We. <clears throat> wow, pretty, that's pretty close. That's pretty tight. Well, event. we um, the city hall closes at four thirty, so we wouldn't technically. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, can we hmm, see option is holding it on Thursday without you? Can you do, which, can we do afternoon? Afternoon? <laughs> we just are really light on coverage after court because, like, Laura's out, or we're trying to figure out, out Wednesday. We, I mean, there's there's not a lot of people running the front counter on Wednesday after court, and then we other could employees do, leave. you could skip that meeting and just yeah. We could do. Florida we could make Florida. Wednesday. We can make Wednesday afternoon. If Wednesday work. works for you guys, which is the 18th, we could make Wednesday the 18th, the afternoon work for us. I'm I'm open anytime Wednesday. I I am not. I'm okay. Not I, Wednesday. I am not open Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> I'm open Wednesday morning. But okay, right. so but let's look at let's, let's look at Thursday again. Everybody yeah. else works for Wednesday afternoon. I'll just call Jessica and she'll catch me up. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Okay, so Wait, are we talking Wednesday afternoon or Thursday afternoon? If can we do Thursday after two? I think that work it works for me. Thursday after two works for me. Like you want to say three o'clock on Thursday? I can do that. Or maybe three fifteen on Thursday. Everybody else? I think that's back to school, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, how about we do 3.30 on Thursday? Sorry. Will that work? Uh, Jessica, would that, Emily, would that work for you? That works for us if it, if right now we've got three people, we need one more person for quorum. I'm, it no, works for yeah, me. Laura. So. Okay. okay. Three. Michael, are you still with us? No. Nancy, you still with us? Okay, so awesome. it's Thursday. Michael with Thursday. us. Nancy dropped off. Okay. Can either Michael or, well, yeah, I mean, Michael, can you make Thursday at three thirty? I think we lost him. Really showing you, Rob. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Well, let, so I think we hey guys, have anyways. Sorry. Hey, if y'all can hear me, go. I can make it. Cool. Okay. 3.30, okay. The 19th, August 19th. August 19th, 3.30 p.m. Perfect. Done. It has been decided. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So let's go ahead. I'll make a motion to, is there any, unless there's anything else, I'm going to uh, make a motion to adjourn at 10.10. 10. I second the motion. Excellent. Aye. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank we'll you. See you guys next good night. Week. Good morning. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank see you, you next week. All right. We'll see you all. Have a Bye. great day.